Welcome to the 2020 Indiana Black Expo Minority Small Business Series presented by Key Bank. Today's topic is the benefits of becoming a certified business. My name is Charlotte Lavelle. I previously in one life, I was a certification specialist. I practiced in the Department of Transportation and also in the Department of Administration. Since that time, I have retired and I do consulting work in the same area. I will be your host for this afternoon's session. I would like to recognize our sponsors, KeyBank, AT&T, Carrier, Cummings, Delta Fawcett, the Indianapolis Airport Authority, One America, Visit Indy, Indianapolis Power and Light, and Eli Lilly and Company. Also, thank you to our series partners, the Indiana Economic Development Corporation, the Indiana Small Business Development Center, the Indy Chamber, the Indianapolis Recorder, Engaging Solutions, Indiana Department of Workshop Workforce Development, the City of Indianapolis, the Indiana Department of Transportation, the Indiana Department of Administration, and the State of Indiana. Before we start, I have a few housekeeping rules. A few housekeeping rules for you. First, if you have a question, please type it in the Q&A box and we will answer as many as possible before our session ends. Also, toward the end of the session, there will be a link to the session survey in the chat box. We ask that you fill out the survey to assist us with planning future webinars. The panelists for today's session are Camille Blunt, Director of Office of Minority and Women Business Development for the City of Indianapolis. Crystal Bell, Certification Specialist for Indiana Department of Administration's Division of Supplier Diversity. Sean Howard, Supported Service Lead for the Indiana Department of Transportation Economic Opportunity Division and Jerron Haggerty, Director of the Minority Enterprise Services at the Mid-States Minority Supplier Development Council. Our first panelist today is Ms. Camille Blunt. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, if you'll bear with me while I share my screen. So my name again is Camille Blunt. Um, I am uh, the director of the Office of Minority and Women Business Development for the city of Indianapolis. Um, so our office is the certifying entity for the city of Indianapolis. If you're interested in doing business with the city of Indianapolis as a um, minority vendor, you would need to be uh, certified with our office. Um, our mission is um, to strive to enhance the city's growth and economic stability through promotion of contracting and procurement opportunities for minority women, veteran and disabled owned businesses. Um, our office provides free certifications, consultations, and we host various events throughout the year. We build productive um, partnerships, host events to educate vendors on projects and bidding opportunities, and we promote successful procurement opportunities for XBE firms with city, county, and municipal agencies, and also public and private partnership projects. There are several certification um, categories for, um, for the city of Indianapolis. Those include um, MBE, which is our minority business enterprise. Um, those minority groups for the MBE category include African-American, Hispanic, Asian Islanders, 
Asian Indian and American Indians, um, which are recognized, um, have to be recognized with a tribal card. Um, we also recognize women owned businesses. Um, a woman would need to be 51% owner of that company and it would need to be um, controlled um, by that woman. Um, we also certify veteran owned businesses. Um, they must be able to provide a DD-214, which is an honorable discharge documentation and two options for being certified as a VBE are at a city level or the federal level. We also certify um, our disabled owned business enterprise. Um, they will need to be able to provide, uh, they would first start with our um, Office of Disability Affairs and that office would provide us with an affidavit and they would go through our same certification process. Um, the benefits to certification with the City of Indianapolis, it's an invitation to personalize and targeted events, um, authentic authentication um, that businesses own, manage and control by a qualifying group. Um, it provides promotion of business um, on OMWBD's diverse vendor directory. We, uh, it sets your business apart from others in the marketplace. You receive bidding opportunities and project information almost daily from our office. And we are in constant advocacy of all of the vendors who are certified with our office. There are several criteria that you must meet in order to be certified with our office. Um, one of the biggest being 51% um, ownership um, by that minority qualifying member. Um, that qualifying member needs to be um, in control of day-to-day -day operations. Um, we need to see documentation of that. Um, and also that individual needs to have the technical expertise to perform the duties that um, are being um, certified. Um, some of the major rec requirements for the program include that the company must be headquartered and domiciled in the state of Indiana. Um, that needs to be registered with the Indiana Secretary of State, have corporate taxes, and the location of the highest office would need to be within Indiana. Um, the principal place of business, um, you can have multiple locations, but those the, one of the locations, the major locations, um, needs to be um, within um, Indiana. Uh, and it must be a viable business for at least two or three years. Um, that particular um, requirement can be waived um, depending upon the expertise of the owner of the business. And it must be a for-profit business. Um, we have also provided several helpful links that can help you um, with this certification process, um, a link, I show a link here to our office, um, our purchasing division. Before you become certified with our office, you would need to register with our purchasing division. Um, there is a link here for um, certifying your business. Um, if you go to that link, you will find the application and we will be able to answer any questions for you. If you would like for us to help walk you through the application, you can feel free to set up a business consultation with our office, um, that is a free um, service and there's no charge for that. Um, you can also find here links to bidding opportunities um, and we do send those out almost daily. Um, and then we have um, our COVID-19 resource information and additionally business um, development information. Um, if at any time you have any questions regarding our certification, bidding opportunities, um, any questions regarding your, um, your certification in general, please feel free to reach out to the office. You can reach us by phone at 317-327-5262. Also by email, um, that is our general email address, omwbd at indy.gov. And our website is indy.gov forward slash omwbd. So I thank you um, for uh, having me this afternoon. If anyone has any questions, please drop them into the Q&A section and I will be happy to address those. Thank you, Camille. Next, our next speaker is Crystal Bell and she is the certification specialist for the 
IDOA, or Indiana Department of Administration, diverse, I'm sorry, IDOA's Division of Supplier Diversity. Crystal. Crystal, your volume. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Charlotte, for that amazing introduction. How's everyone doing today? Um, hope everyone is off to an amazing start and so glad to have each and every one of you here so I can share um, this information with you. As Charlotte said, I am a certification specialist for the Division of Supplier Diversity um, and always happy to help the community, entrepreneurs, business owners um, with our application process. And today, obviously, to share the benefits and perks of being uh, certified by the Division of Supplier Diversity as a woman-owned minority or veteran business. All right, so here we go. One second, there we go. All right, so the Division of Supplier Diversity, first of all, to tell you the perks and benefits, wanna share just a little bit of background um, on the division here, and then we'll get into those uh, benefits and you know the reasons you should become certified. Now, the division was established back in 1983, and it is, again, housed within the Department of Administration for the state of Indiana. Um, and what we do here is the goal is obviously to promote, um, monitor and enforce standards of certification of any minority um, and women owned business enterprises, right? And simply just making sure that we can provide an opportunity where there's equal opportunity for both minority and women businesses in the uh, procurement and contracting process, right? I think we can all agree that that is very important, creating a level playing field. We also, as I stated, um, are now housing the veteran-owned small business program as well. And there are two methods to be certified. Um, you can be certified as a veteran uh, through the federal uh, program of certification. You can also apply through the state, obviously through IDOA to be certified. We recognize both of those programs. Not sure if anyone know that. Now, as far as the goals, when it comes to veteran certification, the goal is 3%. And when we say um, goals, actually, we're simply speaking to the use of subcontractors um, in the program. So we, our expectation is that 3% of the goal is met when it comes to using the um, veteran businesses. Again, now, as a veteran business, you don't have to be in Indiana, but we're expecting that your principal place of business is here. Um, the majority of your business is done in Indiana. And this is the website uh, that you can visit to get more information on becoming a veteran uh, certified business through our program. As far as the MB, M and W qualifications, uh, qualifying members must be, first of all, US citizens. Um, and again, here is a brief list of qualifying membership when it comes to the minority business, including African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, Asian Pacific Americans, um, and the subcontinent Asian Americans, as well as women um, for the program qualifications. And ownership must be at least 51%, must be real and substantial. So we've touched on that um, already this afternoon, but again, uh, it can't just be in paper. Um, we want it to be real and substantial, proving and showing that you have control of the business as well. Um, your day-to-day -day, um, experience, your day-to-day -day operations, as well as your expertise, your background. Um, so we do ask for supporting information, such as your resume, education, uh, certifications, license, um, state license, if that is applicable to you when it comes to uh, your service industry that you are providing um, business for, that you're in business with, all right? Other qualifications obviously include your um, independence and uh, what affiliations that you may have. We will address those concerns as they arise during the application process. Um, depending on the industry, specifically construction, trucking, and supplier or distributors, we will do an on-site visit. Now, with this day and time with the pandemic, um, 
being prevalent, we're not doing as many on sites, which means we would come to your location, um, do a one on one interview with you. So right now those interviews are being done virtually um, to whatever the uh, vendor's availability is, and we're still processing applications for those industries as well. So nothing's changed, thank goodness, um, during this time, as well as far as having those certifications for trucking supplier and construction businesses. Obviously, um, at the end of the day, we analyze that full application to go ahead and render a decision. And this is another link that you can reference, IDOA, forward slash 3064 to get any more information you may need in regards to the industries and our processing of the application and what goes into that. All right, we have a checklist uh, when it comes to completing your application. So be sure to use that and don't hesitate to call us at any point if you have questions during the application process. Um, we don't make a habit of making uh, giving any interpretation of our regulations or the rules while there's an application in process. We like to review that application in whole. Um, and I always advise anytime you're filling out an application, don't leave anything blank. So if it does not apply, let us know that as well um, on your application. Um, it does have to be notarized as well. Um, those are a few pieces that are often overlooked. So we need your signature as well as uh, it has to be signed by an, or notarized by a notary and don't forget your bidder registration number. That's actually the first thing you're going to do um, so that the state recognizes that you are a vendor and eligible to do business in the state of Indiana. So now that you're certified, you wanna know, well, what's the benefit? I've done all the work. Um, what is next for me? Well, that's a great question. As a minority veteran or woman owned business, you're not eligible to subcontract opportunities um, on state contracts in the state of Indiana. You uh, will have the option to be on our mailing list or our listserv so that you're notified first of any state business opportunities, um, any upcoming events. Please check out our events page as well if you haven't done that yet for the Division of Supplier Diversity because we like to keep that updated, uh, making you aware of any opportunities um, for biz as well as opportunities with the division um, that we may have going on throughout the entire state or even virtually. And as a qualifying business, um, you're eligible to be on contracts or for purchasing by casinos, any state um, educational institution, as well as any public or private uh, organizations, which is significant and uh, quite a huge benefit for any certified entity. Make note um, that after you're certified, there is a recertification process with us every three years. In between those three years, we ask you to um, update your file annually, um, including any changes that have taken place, whether it's a new uh, mailing address, your physical address is the same, but you have a new mailing address, um, anything in the ownership or control of the business. Those changes we want to stay on top of, and that is to your benefit because if it's not updated in our system, then that may cause you um, to miss out on an opportunity. So you wanna make sure that you're keeping your information up to date within our system, um, as well as on your bidder profile. Um, that's often overlooked, you know, uh, so make sure your bidder profile is updated as well as, or in addition to that, notifying the state of Indiana Division of Supplier Diversity that we have your updated information. And that's done yearly, again, in between certifications. Um, and finally, in closing, just want to make sure you know how to reach us and how to uh, get in touch with the Division of Supplier Diversity. So um, I don't know if you're if you're on a computer, if you're on your phone, whatever the case is, you can go ahead and take a screenshot of this information. That includes our phone, fax, email, um, our social media information. We are online, so you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, um, as well as Instagram. Um, for the Division of Supplier Diversity of the state of Indiana. And that is all I have for you. But again, don't hesitate to reach out to uh, myself or anyone here with the division uh, with any questions that you may have. I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Ms. Charlotte. Thank you, Crystal. You gave a very impressive presentation. Here to discuss the DBE ACDBE program is Mr. Sean Howard with the Indiana Department of Transportation 
Economic Opportunity Division. Hi, Sean. Good afternoon. Give me a second to share my screen. All right, it looks like it's going. I just want to start off saying uh, two things. One, I really wanted to thank uh, you and Alice and IBE for putting this program on for people. Um, I think it, I think it's really good information. And I wanted to really thank Camille and Crystal uh, for going before me because I get to talk about some more fun stuff because these programs are all uh, related, as you may have uh, noticed from from qualifications and purposes and things. And uh, they they really do, and and we work with all these people. So you know, it 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 uh, sort of frees me up to talk about more entertaining things. So uh, thanks, guys. Um, what I'm more going to point out is uh, that the the differences as opposed to the uh, commonalities, because uh, like I said, a lot of things uh, with with uh, us are in common. So anyway. So DBE, ACDBE, uh, the DBE stands for Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. ACDBE stands for Airport Concessionaire Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. Uh, the programs were initiated in 1980 by the U.S. Department of Transportation, uh, and they are part of the 49 CFR 26 and 23, respectively. Uh, actually, if you want to read about uh, so if you want to read the CFR, it is perfectly readable, unlike a lot of federal code. So, um, and it really explains in detail the purpose and, and everything that the program is supposed to do. So, and in, in the state of Indiana, NDOT is the sole certifier for the DBE and ACDBE program. So even though there are other uh, users and recipients of USDOT funding, um, we are the sole certifier. So you have to come to us. The other, a uh, good thing about us, uh, or I think, is uh, our certification application is all electronic. Uh, we actually don't even have a way to handle paper anymore, which is nice since we're working remotely now. It makes it made the transition much easier. Um, so if you need to get certified to participate in the DBE or ACDBE program, um, uh, I'm going to talk about that at the more at the end as to how. Um, you go about doing that. So anyway, I'm just going to go over this really quickly. Um, so the groups pretty much are the same. Um, if you notice, really, uh, veterans uh, aren't on the presumed groups, or uh, neither are disabled, as the city certifies disabled. However, um, if you are disabled or you are a veteran and you do not belong to one of these other uh, categories, you can, there's a way to apply individually. And we do have a handful of people who have applied independently, independently as uh, veterans and disabled that have been certified. It really is a handful out of 300-ish um, uh, in-state DBEs. There's about 10 that uh, do not belong to one of these groups. So anyway, uh, as uh, the other people said, you have to be a US citizen. What with us, you can also be a permanent resident. You don't have to be a US citizen. And as with them, you have to possess expertise in the field and uh, control the daily operations of the business. The big difference is the DBE and ACDBE programs have an economic component. Um, so if you have a personal net worth less than $1.32 million, and this excludes the equity of your primary residence and the assets of the firm that is applying for certification, then uh, on that account, you qualify for the program. Also, you have to be a small business for SBA rules. Uh, so right now, uh, that's uh, less than $23.98 million in um, in the three-year average of gross receipts. There's also, you get assigned NAICS codes with us, and those NAICS codes sometimes have um, their own uh, ceiling. So for example, you might be um, bringing in $10 million a year as a firm, but the NAICS code for what you do is like 7.5 million. So even though you're under that general gross receipts, you still would not be you would not be able to qualify for the program because what you do is um, 
le is less than what your gross receipts are. I hope that makes sense. And one, and one important thing, um, so we run into some issues about the certifications because we are so similar and people uh, will get confused uh, as to what certification they have and what certification they need. So I like to go over this a little bit. Really, you need to follow the dollars. So if it's a city project with solely city funding on it, it's gonna be city goals. If it's a, a project with state dollars um, and that's solely funded by the state, then it's going to be the IDOA's goals, which for construction right now are 7% minority, 5% women, and 3% uh, veteran. Now, one of the things, you can't be double counted in any of those categories. You have to pick one and stick with it. Now, on the DBE side, um, if a dollar of federal funding through USDOT is in your project that you're uh, wanting to work on, um, then it's going to have, the project's going to have a DBE goal. Uh, it also is going to have the federal contract uh, requirements for bacon, uh, Davis bacon wage rates and, and uh, all of that sort of thing, and the uh, Title VI and ADA requirements. Our section no longer handles Title VI and ADA, so if you have questions about that, let me know and I'll get you in touch with Erin Hall and she can answer those questions for you. And that's uh, really, to me, the fun thing about NDOT and why it is confusing, but is also, I think, kind of kind of fun is we use both DBEs and MWVBEs on our contracts. And just to show here, um, from the beginning of January, this current year till the end of July, uh, we closed out 303 uh, contracts with federal funds in it for a total of a little over $670 million. Our overall statewide goal right now is 10.1% to pay to DBEs, but we hit 11.91% for almost $80 million paid to DBE companies. Now, on the other side, on the state-funded contracts um, for MW and VBE participation, we closed out 339 contracts uh, for almost $725 million being paid to um, MW and VBEs for a total of a little over $83 million. So, you know, it, from January to uh, the end of July, you're talking a little over $160 million paid to uh, women and minority and veteran owned firms in the state. So if that's not a benefit of being, you know, certified, I, I don't really know. I, I, I got nothing else for you. I mean, you know, I mean, look at this map. This is, these are INDOT's projects um, from 2020 to 2022. The state is covered. So if you have a business that you think could work with INDOT, um, there, there's a project probably and multiple projects in your county you are in. So, um, please, you know, reach out to us, let us know, and we can see what we can do with you. Because as I said, the funding, this covers funding from USDOT. So it's not just NDOT. Um, Federal Highway is the uh, biggest um, recipient of USDOT funds in the state, but you also have the FTA, which um, is usually local transit lines and rail service, um, and FAA uh, airports. So um, just in the Indianapolis area, right now, uh, there's lots of INDOT projects going on. Indigo has lots of projects happening now through the bus rapid transit, and the International Airport has projects as well. So there's a, there's a big need for DBEs, and there's really just not enough to um, fill all those spots. So is it, this is a good time to be a DBE, because the way all these programs work, we all work with primes. So you're, those primes are expected to hit those DBE goals or the state's um, MWVBE goals or the city's MWV uh, dis disabled goals, uh, as the case may be for the project. And we all share primes. So that's one of the big pitfalls. You got to make sure you're certified. I always tell people when they say, uh, should I get certified with IDOA? Yes, yes, you should. Should I get certified with the city? Yes, yes, you should. Because you just want to be prepared. Um, because if you're working primarily for city projects and you've got a prime and they are happy with your work and they get an in-dot contract and they can use you and they look at you and, and say, 
hey, uh, I, need, I need a certified person to work on this project. Are you certified? And you say, well, yeah, you should know that. I've been working for you for a while. And they put you on uh, their bid with INDOT. We check that. So we see that you're not certified as a DBE. Well, guess what? Then you can't be included in the project. So I would say get certified with all of us if you really are serious. So, and if you want to get, like I said, with us, it's electronic. So it's a three step process. First, you have to get to an ITAP login. ITAP stands for in dot technical application. Um, pathway. That is our database that all of INDOT stuff runs off of. And it's, it's pretty simple to do. If, if you run afoul of it, you can, you can contact me. After you get that, you get access to our DBE portal. And uh, there's the link right there. Um, after you get access, then you can get your application. And it is this. It is based on the same application that you could find in paper. But like I said, don't send us a paper application because we're going to send it right back to you, and uh, tell you to go online. Um, but it's it is it exactly follows that. We also have a list of required documents. If you've already applied with the city or with IDOA, it's pretty much the same list of documents. They just have to be in PDF format, and uh, so that you can upload them to the application. And then, just for funsies, we have MOUs with the city and with IDOA. So if you get certified with us, um, it only flows the one direction because we have the economic requirements. So just because you certify uh, with the city or IDOA doesn't necessarily mean you uh, qualify for the DBE program. But most of the time, if you uh, get certified with as a DBE, you generally qualify for either IDOA or the city. Each entity does uh, retain the final decision making on that. So uh, there are some other quirks in there that I haven't mentioned that may, uh, you may not be qualified. Um, so, um, you know, don't, don't get upset if, if that should happen, but there's details listed on both of these places to take advantage of those MOU agreements. And there's my contact information. So uh, if you need more information about any of this, let me know, I can provide it for you. Um, it's something I certainly enjoy. And like I said, we, we need DBE, so um, give me a call. And that's our certification team. If you can't find me, uh, Derek is my supervisor, so you can, kind, you can contact him. And that's, that is my presentation, thank you. Thank you, Sean. Cert certification programs also exist in the private sector for minority businesses. Mr. Duran Haggerty will provide an overview of what it means to be a certified member of the Mid-State Minority Suppliers Development Council. Hey, Duran. Hey, everyone. Thank you, Charlotte. Let me share my screen here. All right, everyone. Again, my name is Jerron Haggerty. I'm the uh, director of MBE services uh, here at Mid-States MSDC. Um, thank you guys for having me and putting on this program. Tell you a little bit about the council today and about our network. For starters, who are we? Um, there's two organizations that are working to one in our space. Um, so NMSDC is our national organization. Um, they provide us with the uh, certification criteria, um, the platform to be able to um, you know, work in the communities that we serve. They're chartered in 1972. They're a private nonprofit member services organization, um, and they're headquartered in New York, New York. Mid-state, we were established in 76. We were a private, uh, we have the same setup, private nonprofit member services organization. Um, however, we're one of 23 regional affiliates um, for NMSDC. Um, we have offices in Indianapolis and in St. Louis. However, we cover a territory of uh, three states. So that'd be Central Illinois, uh, which is everything excluding Chicago and Chicago land, um, because Chicago land spills over into Indiana. So that would um, exclude Northwest Indiana, where we cover the entire um, 
remainder of the state. And then we cover Eastern Missouri, which also encompasses another major city in St. Louis, hence our headquarters, or hence our office. Here's our team. Um, our president and CEO is Ms. Carolyn Mosby. Um, Ms. Mosby is responsible for the entire um, success of the council. However, on a day-to-day -day basis, she's uh, you know, working with the Fortune 500 companies that we serve, work, working with the corporations, you know, finding out what their needs are, fostering relationships um, to be ready to advocate on behalf of the MBEs. Ms. Angela Franklin, who's our vice president and the COO, whom I report to, uh, Ms. Franklin is primarily responsible for managing our real estate and our operations of the council. Um, but she too does um, dabble in business development um, as well as advocating on behalf of MBEs, um, you know, helping them get involved with corporations and such. Ms. Danica Thomas, um, who's one of everyone's favorite, she's our Director of Corporate Relations, Projects and Events. So this is the go-to person that is making the networking opportunities happen. Um, we all pitch in, but she's the leader in regards to setting up events. She also dabbles in corporate relations and because she's such a tenured team member, she um, works with MBEs as well, um, is very knowledgeable on all subjects. And then you have myself, my role is primarily to uh, handle the application process, uh, work with the MBEs. I'm, I'm often the first point of contact in regards to the MBEs just due to the nature of my position. Um, as well as, you know, I've, I have began to work in the corporate space more. I'm trying to bring on corporate members to be able to, um, you know, bring on more of our MBEs to, to be a part of their spend. Giving you a snapshot of the network, again, we'll start on the left-hand side, NMSDC as a whole. We have over 1,400 uh, corporate members, um, well over 12,000 certified MBEs that are making an annual economic impact of about 400 billion. On our council level, um, from a local standpoint, we have um, 54 corporate members and we have 16 national members. Um, we have about the, the certified MBEs that varies because um, on a month in month out basis, I'm certifying new MBEs. And you also have people that sometimes for whatever reason they expire, they come right back the next month. So that number kind of fluctuates. As of right now, this morning it's 262. Um, but in reality, we have access to about 300 plus um, MBEs that are in our space. Um, and those MBEs are producing a 6.8 billion annual economic impact. So we mentioned earlier that, you know, both organizations are operating as a member services organization. And so oftentimes you'll hear MBEs refer to themselves as a member of mid-states and that's okay. It's perfectly fine. The letter of the law, the correct way that things work is our members are actually our corporate members. Um, and our corporate members are, you know, these large Fortune 500 companies, um, such as Eli Lilly and Commons, or what have you, that are non-MBE business that have a purchasing or supplier diversity program. Um, by all means, we work for the corporations in trying to diversify their spend, add value to their supply chain. We work with and we are trying to foster a uh, environment of success for the MBEs, our constituents. Who are our constituents? A certified MBE who has 51% ownership and control of a company by a minority, US citizenship, um, and part of an annual certification um, process where you pay a fee based on your annual gross revenues. We'll learn more about that here in a moment. The network. So NMSDC covers the entire USA, including um, the territories, Alaska, Hawaii. Um, they do it through six regions and they do it through 23 councils. So these 23 councils can be comprised of a city like Chicago. Um, that whole city is just one council. It can be one singular state like Ohio or Michigan, um, or it could be comprised of several states, much like ourselves, mid-states, um, or our uh, tri-state council, which consists of Kentucky, Tennessee, um, and West Virginia, right below us in the light brown. So how this works is, I mentioned earlier that you have um, local corporations and you have national corporations. They could be one and the same. A good example for a local corporation for us would be Eli Lilly. They're located right in our territory. Their headquarters is, and their principal place of business is in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, however, um, I'll use Cummins. I'm not sure if Eli Lilly is a national member, but I know Cummins is a national member. They're located in Columbus, Indiana, 
but they are national members. So what a national member means is that because you know that our certification is national, um, and you know that you you need MBEs um, on a wider spectrum than where your principal place of business is located, you will pay a um, you will pay a fee to be a national member to NMSDC. NMSDC will utilize those funds throughout all 23 councils to be able to uh, connect you with all 23. If you are a local member, then you are saying um, that your primary need is going to be for MBEs in your locale. All right. So a good example for us outside of someone that'd be connected with us is I'd say Procter & Gamble. They're in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, however, there are MBEs right here in Indianapolis or in St. Louis that work with Procter & Gamble. You know, there's nothing as as people mentioned earlier uh, with the state. You have to be dom domiciled in the state to do business with the state municipality. For us, um, again, the certification is national, so you go beyond your territory. Your territory only decides which council you work with. Here's another snapshot of our territory. Everything in the blue is what we cover. Um, everything in the white is covered by other councils, uh, specifically to the left hand of your screen. The white in Indiana and Illinois is obviously covered by Chicago. And then the white in um, Missouri is covered by the Kansas City Council. I think I'm saying their name correctly. So again, when you get this national certification, um, no matter where you get certified in the country, there's gonna be four goals that are important. Obviously we wanna get you certified, uh, which is basically the process where we examine um, who you are, we validate that you can do what you say you can do. Um, development comes through, once you're certified, we begin to work with you, um, but we see areas of opportunity. Um, we're definitely trying to help you improve those so you can better your chances of number one, growing your business, um, just in general, or number two, by connecting um, connecting you with the organization that was your target to work with coming into our space. And that goes right into Connect. Um, we are using, I mentioned Danica earlier, we are using um, the networking approach to help you get connected with the, uh, the corporations that you'd like to do business with. So typically pre-COVID, um, we were having everything in person, anything from a golf outing to an annual dinner, our biggest event, our procurement conference, um, um, which we have once a year or trace or whatever word works for you uh, to be able to connect you with the supplier diversity people, the procurement uh, officers and people that make decisions on contracts and bids. You're able to have conversations with them. You're able to wear your, um, you know, company logo, have your cards, represent yourself and, and really have a conversation without having to deal with the gatekeeper to be able to talk and advocate on behalf of your business. Um, we're still doing this in 2021. Uh, we're still going to be having events that are just primarily going to be virtual. We've had some success with some virtual events this year. Um, Council's still alive and well and connecting um, MBEs to major corporations is still alive and well, just going to look a little different. Advocacy, this is the one, if you ask me my opinion, I put this one strongly on the, the MBE because we cannot advocate for you if you're not um, if, if you get certified and we don't hear from you, you don't come to any events, you're not really involved, it's hard to advocate on behalf of your business. It's hard to um, not make you just be a number in a database. You know, if someone's asking for a construction company, technology company, et cetera, advocacy comes from knowing um, why you're the right fit for a job or why you're the right fit for a role if there's several people that are doing the same thing as you, which often happens in this space. Um, but these are the four goals, and these are also the things that I would say um, that you should hold the, count, the, the council accountable to. So what is the purpose of our certification? Who's it for? So our certification is, as I said before, is for individuals that want to do business with the private sector, also known as corporate America. Um, our certification is seen by many as a gold standard in the private sector. Um, it provides assurance that the business chosen through a corporation's uh, supplier diversity efforts is legitimately um, minority owned and operated company. Um, for the MBE, this is gonna be a tool to help facilitate more opportunities for your business. So this is gonna be, again, something that you use. Your primary selling point is you as a business owner and, and what you do. Your, your fantastic capabilities. However, this is gonna be a tool to, to help you. Um, some people are able to work with these Fortune 500 companies on their own, and it just turns out to be a situation 
when they find out that the owner is a minority, they ask you to get certified. They're already doing business with you. They already love your work, but they ask you to get certified because the millions or thousands of dollars that they're spending with you, they would love to get credit for minority spend. Other people are doing just fine, but they feel that they could do even better by you know, garnering a contract from a large corporation, um, increasing their bottom line. And so they come into this space. Either way, we're glad to have you and, and this certification can definitely be beneficial if, if that's your target audience. So what are some of the benefits? I mentioned it's a nationally recognized certification. So uh, what that means is you get certified with mid-states. Again, that means your principal place of business is in um, Indiana, Central Illinois, Eastern Missouri. Well, that doesn't stop you again from going over to Ohio and doing work with a corporation there, whether it be Kroger, whether it be Procter & Gamble, Fifth Third, you name it. That doesn't stop you from going to Texas and working with AT&T, um, ConocoPhillips, you name it. Um, it is a national certification, so you're not limited to, to, to your locale. Your locale just determines who you get certified with. Opportunity to network with other certified MBEs. Uh, can't stress this enough. Oftentimes people come in with the idea of, I want to work with Eli Lilly. I want to work with Cummins. You know, I want to work with Enterprise, Bayer, whoever. But they they forget that, well, we have some very large MBEs that are not just in the Mid-States area, but also you know across the nation that you can also connect with and do business with. Our larger MBEs, such as Worldwide Technology um, in St. Louis, Missouri, they are a $12 billion minority-owned company, they spend money with minority firms as if they were a non-minority-owned company. So that's a tremendous opportunity um, for growth in itself to work with other MBEs. Access to networking opportunities, um, which we, we discussed. Um, you're going to be included in a national MBE database. So the members that are national, um, they are going to be able to see you no matter where you're located. Um, because again, that, that means that they want to spend money across the entire nation. They have needs across the entire nation. A local member will only have access, so a local mid-states member will only have access to the MBEs that are in our three states, but you're gonna be included um, either way. You have an opportunity to connect with the other 22 uh, councils in the network. So if you wanted to, for example, uh, use the Ohio thing again, since that's our neighbor. If you wanted to connect with Procter & Gamble, um, we are not going to be your first point of contact because they're not our corporate member. Your first point of contact would be the Ohio Council. And so the way to connect with the Ohio Council, if you needed to utilize their, their resources, would be through a program we have called Subscription Services. And Subscription Services, in short, is um, it's just an opportunity not for you to get recertified, but for an, an opportunity for you to pay a fee to be treated as an MBE with that particular council, be invited to all of their events and experience all of the greatness that they offer. Um, then the invitation to private and public cor corporate sponsored events. So sometimes it's not us that's putting on the program. Sometimes it's gonna be the corporation. Um, and again, that's another great way to get your, get your face out there and learn about how to do business with this corporation. Who's eligible to apply for our certification? Uh, so the following list. Um, we certify you based off ethnicity, not based off your gender. So that's one of the things that's different from the other certifications that are out there. So if we certify you and you are a woman, we're certifying you based off the fact that, for example, if you were a black woman or Latino woman, um, we do we will not certify you just um, based off a of woman. So non-minority women are, are excluded. But if you're Asian Pacific American, African American, Hispanic Latino American, Native American, or Asian Indian American, then, and you can validate at least 25% of your ethnic origin, then you will qualify for our certification. Key point that I wanna throw out there um, with this is that NMSDC does this verification via your birth record. So before you apply, I would advise you to check your birth certificate and see if your ethnicity is listed on there. Um, if it is not, then we have further instructions on our website, but I would tell you we're just probably gonna go up your lineage so provide us with your birth certificate, one of your parents that says it. And if it theirs doesn't say it, then you can go as high as your grandparent. Groups we do not certify, won't spend a lot of time on this. I covered the non-ethnic females. Um, what I can tell you is, because I get asked a lot of time, well, why 
I didn't ask a lot of whys when I was getting trained, but one thing that I can tell you is what was said to me is that these are not seen as disadvantaged areas. Things to consider. Um, so the first thing is like everyone else, it needs to be a for-profit business. Um, the company needs to be legally formed as a sole prop LLC corporation um, or partnership. We do not certify holding companies or parent companies. However, if you have that situation um, where you have a holding company or a parent company, um, just understand that we're gonna certify the company or we will certify the companies under that holding company. So I have a situation, several, where you have one holding company that owns one entity, easy. We're certifying this entity that does the work. You have other situations where you have a holding company that maybe owns two to three companies. Well, if they want all of their companies to be certified, they'd have to certify them individually. Um, if you have a company that does actual work, it's a, it's a, it's a parent company, but, it, but it, it is a producing company, that's okay. But if you have a company that is a holding company in nature only, just for administrative and assets, then you're not eligible to certify that company. Again, your company needs to be head, headquartered in Indiana, Missouri, or Illinois for mid-states. If you're in Ohio or if you're in another state, then you would reach out to that council. Um, the ethnic minority owner needs to, uh, with the majority ownership, needs to have the highest executive position, um, CEO, president, chairman, et cetera. You need to be a US citizen. And again, the ethnic minority owner needs to have 51% or more control. Our certification does cost um, money. Um, so the application processing fees, um, there's one for the initial certification and there's one for the recertification. Recertification process happens on an annual basis. So if you choose to re-engage with Mid-States or NMSDC, you would pay a fee um, that is typically $50 less than your initial certification fee. So we put you in classes, um, class one, two, three, and four, um, and they're like so, class one is under 1 million, in our startups, class two is going to be between um, 1 million and 10 million. Class three is between 10 and 50. And class four is the greater than $50 million bunch. Our largest class, and it's pretty much like this nationally, um, class two is the biggest class um, with class one soon to follow. Certification process. During our process, um, this is just putting it in simple. We can't put our guidelines out there, but this is public information. You'll find this on our website, on NMSTC's website. These are the brackets that we're looking for to validate you. Um, ownership, governance and control, and management. If you hit all three brackets, high possibility you're going to be certified. If you miss one, it's a definite that um, you will not be certified um, and be denied for that reason. Our process, um, as mentioned, um, like the gentleman earlier, our process is similar. It's all online. Um, it's going to be a uh, online application that takes 60 business days or so to process. We do have an expedited function, which is a uh, 25 business days, but there's a higher fee associated with that. And you can find that information on our website as well. And going through the process, there's going to be seven steps. So step one is going to be to submit your online application, pay the processing fee at the end. That is in your control. The next um, six steps would be um, in control of me or the council from a processing standpoint. So we'll reach out to you and let you know when your initial review and desk audit has happened. Um, from there, once we uh, determine that your application is complete, we would schedule an on-site visit. We would coordinate with you to schedule this visit. Step four, we would send you to a certification committee, um, which is comprised of volunteers that are from our corporate members. Um, certification committee reviews all of the findings that I've made in the application process, they render a decision. The board either upholds or overturns that decision. Step six, we notify you. And then step seven, the final step would be you would attend a online virtual um, orientation to make sure that you know how to use your, your um, certification. The process uh, can be found on our website at a, a, a portal called, this link, but the portal is called NMSDC Central. And as I wrap up, I'll tell you a couple of things about NMSD Central, how you can actually apply. So when you go to our website, um, midstatesmsdc.org, it's gonna be four tabs. You're gonna see um, about us, corporations, MBEs, programs and events, certification. Certification can kind of get you straight to some information. But you want to go to the MBE tab 
uh, when you hover over it, there'll be a drop down box. They'll say, you know, certification application. As you click certification application, the next page is going to pop up. Uh, we'll say new certification or recertification. You want to click the top box that says new certification. As you click new certification, um, it's going to say log in or it's going to say create. Click here to create username and password. You want to click click here. After you click click here, you're going to follow three steps and you're going to set up your account, um, which includes verifying your email address. And then from there, once you complete those three steps, you'll be able to access the application and then put all of your information. Um, after you finish the application again, that's when you're going to pay the fee based off the revenues that you entered. Then the application will come um, directly to me. And that's the end of my presentation. Again, I appreciate you guys for having me um, and I'll be a part of the panel for questions. Thank you, Duan. So now it's the fun part for everyone. Uh, we have several, many questions, so we're going to try to do the best we can uh, going through these. Uh, the first question, can we get everybody up? Ron, you left and we need to. There we go. Um, the first question is, does a single member LLC qualify? And um, they noted that a qualification is uh, corporate taxes. Anyway, uh, Camille, you want to answer that? Sure. Um, yes, a single member LLC does qualify. Those are the, you know, those are the easiest to uh, certify. Um, you know, we do suggest that you, um, if you don't have your um, corporate taxes, um, we will accept um, for those particular LLCs, we will um, uh, collect your personal taxes um, on that. And um, the, um, we, um, that, that would be it. So yes, we do accept those entities and, um, you know, they are easier for us to certify. Um, we're not, you know, we don't have to look at who owns what, what were the initial contributions, et cetera, for the creation of the business. Um, so yes, that, um, that's the easy one for us. Okay. John? Pretty much the same. It's, it's, a, it's a very simple um, one to do usually. Okay. And Crystal? Yes, I mimic <laughs> both Sean and Camille. Okay, thank you. And Duran, I assume you uh, go along with what they're saying as well. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Our next question, what are some types of businesses that would benefit the most from being certified? Uh, Sean, we'll start with you. Well, it, it, in my world, it's uh, anyone who's going to... Um, work in the transportation industry. And that, that's, that's going to be a pretty broad uh, because, I mean, yes, with NDOT, you're talking uh, horizontal construction, so concrete, asphalt, haulers. But then we also have a lot of big projects that they'll actually be uh, consultants hired on to do community outreach and community engagement. So it, it's, it's a really broad. And then suppliers, if you're going to supply that industry, uh, that's... Um, that's a good one. Um, and then the, our other DBE users, um, the you know, airports and uh, transit lines have some specialized needs, but um, they'll get into like buildings and some horizontal construction opportunities that uh, NDOT just doesn't have. But I would say if you're going to do any type of government contracting and you qualify for one of the programs, you, you need to get yourself certified. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, I, I'll go. I didn't mention this during my presentation. I mentioned being, you know, um, for profit, but you also need to be in the B2B space, obviously coming to work with uh, these, these corporations in the private sector. Um, service team tends to be our um, highest category, manufacturing, um, construction, you know, anything that you can be a part of uh, someone's supply chain is, is good for us. Okay. Another question. Um, uh, what if you have generated no 
revenue so far uh, due to the pandemic? How does this affect your ability to be certified? I'll, I'll take that for mid states. Um, we do take startups in the pre-revenue phase. Um, so again, that will put you as a, as a class one. Um, they, it is a little difficult when working with startups only because they haven't in most cases um, done what it is that they're saying that they can do. Um, the, the main point of reference the resume, making sure that the re requisite skill set is there to be able to uh, kind of ascertain, can this person do this work? Um, and then after we certify them, we just keep a, you know, close tie with them for, you know, when they're actually during the, let me back up, during the certification process, we want a clear understanding on when they're going to go live um, and when they're going to start performing. And then after the certification, um, we're kind of looking for those invoices and, um, you know, obviously looking to see if we can help them in any way. Right. Uh, Duran, I have a, another one for you and I'll come back around to the other. Uh, but for you, someone asked if your application isn't approved, is the fee refunded? No, ma'am. Okay. What about national level certification, for instance, to work directly with targets for shipping? Uh, would that be a local or national issue? Anyone? I couldn't hear. Oh, I'm sorry. You couldn't hear me? No, ma'am. Pretty oh. low. Wait a minute. Let me see what's going on. Can you hear me now? Um... Is your mic covered up? It sounds a little muted. Is that better? That's 100% oh, better. Really oh, okay. I don't know. I'm lost in these. Um, now I lost that question. Uh, is there a list of primes that small businesses can utilize? What type of list? I'm sorry. Oh, a list of the primes, uh, like mainly like pr probably prime contractors or... Um, the main person that handles the job and they need uh, MBEs or DBEs to work alongside to get their credit and so forth. Um, for the city of Indianapolis, we don't necessarily have a list of primes. Um, we do, um, I would suggest that if you're interested in bidding on opportunities that you go to all pre-bid meetings, um, pre-bid meetings, you will, um, have the opportunity to see the list of what primes were present for that meeting. And then you can reach out to those individually, um, give them your um, capability state, state, what service what you provide. Okay. Um, is there any benefit to private practice physicians becoming certified? Are there ever any opportunities available? Um, for the city of Indianapolis, um, we do um, manage the, um, the Marion County Jail. Um, and so uh, there would be opportunity at the, um, oh, the um, assessment center. Um, it just recently opened. Um, it is managed by Eskenazi, but you know, I could see where they, there may be opportunity there. There may also be opportunity through the coroner's office if mm -hmm there, you know, it may loosely be depending on what kind of medicine you practice. Um, but the one thing with our certified vendor list is our list is used all over the state. Um, so a lot of times people will um, pull the list um, just because they know that we are a good resource of certified businesses. So for any kind of business, if you own a restaurant, if you, you know, I don't think it's a bad thing to for free advertising. Um, and then it legitimizes your business. Let's let someone know that yes, someone has reviewed my documents, someone has made sure that my business is in running proper order. Um, and so um, I, I would say anyone could be certified. I wouldn't expect that you would receive a flood of business um, from being on the certified vendor list, but I, I would say it never hurts to be um, to have certain certifications that you can point to. Crystal? 
You know, um, what Camille said, I totally mimic that in regards to the benefit of any private practice being certified. Um, definitely can't guarantee um, that there would be any opportunities there for you, but it's better to have that certification than um, not. I was thinking uh, maybe along the state hospitals and um, facilities like that, the uh, um, prison in the prison system, uh, it's a possibility those, you know, that's where I think they might be used. Useful, most certainly. I've been told that you have to be in business for two years before you can become a minority business recognized by the state. Is this true? That is absolutely within our uh, regulations that you should be in business for two years prior to certification. However, we do also have in place a waiver. So contending that they meet those qualifications as well, we will consider a startup or someone that's been in business less than two years. Sean? Um, INDOT will certify startups because we look uh, solely at your ability to control your business. So if you have a background in whatever it is you're starting your business, that, that is not a requirement. That's all, that's all that is required for a DBE certification. Okay. Um, what if you're start if you're starting a business but have a your retail license? And I'm not sure where that fits in. Anyone? I mean, I think that for that particular question, they were trying to show that they do have experience in the area. And again, um, as Crystal um, and and Sean both pointed out, you know, we will accept. Um, there are times where we will provide waivers if we believe that that business owner does have experience in that area and field and, and has um, a proven track record. Um, so even though your business may be brand new, you may have um, been performing in that area for, for years prior to that. So I think, um, you know, we would still um, be open to reviewing and looking at that. And, um, and again, for our particular office, you can schedule before you submit your certification application, you can schedule time to meet with one of our um, certification officers to go through any questions that you have um, prior to the submission of your application. And we would be able to address concerns like that um, at that time. Okay. Um, North, this question comes from Northwest Indiana. I have been in business for six months, but since COVID hit, I have not gotten off to a good start. My business is shuttle bus transportation. How can I get help in this area? Crystal? <laughs> Um, I would, you know, that's a, a challenging position that quite a few vendors are actually facing right now, especially during the pandemic. So um, you're in the right place actually to get this information. Um, and what I would tell the, I didn't get the name of them, but anyone who is, you know, uh, struggling for lack of better words to um, gain new business is just continue to get out there um, the best you can um, and networking with different um, entities that you can provide that service to would be my best suggestion for you right now. Um, and continue to you know, uh, communicate with the state of Indiana and whomever else it is that you have um, your certification with so that you're aware of any opportunities that may come up um, during this time period. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I would suggest also you might want to look for your local PTAC rep or your local um, I, um, ISBDC rep because they're regional and they can provide you with all sorts of business counseling and PTAC, particularly federal opportunities for something like a shuttle bus. I don't know if any exists off the top of my head, but, um, and then IMSDBC that with, um, like uh, they can give you information on uh, the various COVID uh, loan and grant programs that can assist to carry your business through. Okay. For those who have recently started a business within the last year or so, would you say that certification is beneficial to them or does it depend on the industry that the business is in? Open this up to any of you. 
Um, I would say that, again, I think certification is, is, is beneficial to, um, to any business, but I think that you also have to have your expectations of receiving that certification. Um, they need to be appropriate. And so if you're not in construction or, or supplying something that the city um, utilizes frequently, or if you're not um, you know, providing some kind of professional services, engineering, um, architecture, things of that nature, um, you're, you're probably not going to see a flood of business come from the city of Indianapolis. Mm. Um, and, and either way, you're not going to receive a flood of, of opportunity. You, you still have to go get the business. The certification, you know, is, is, a, is a, a starting point, but you still have to go out, look for opportunities, bid on opportunities, um, uh, interact with the prime contract um, holders, um, so there are still things that you need to do. The certification just kind of opens that door up a little bit. Right. You have to kick it open. Right. Um, if your business is in the food industry, would these certifications work? Would any of these certifications work? They possibly could. And how? Absolutely. You want to give a how? <laughs> uh, with um, So with the uh, ACDBE um certification especially uh what that uh, that is for airport concessionaires so the bricks and mortar businesses on the airport and anyone who provides goods or services to those businesses qualify as acdbes mm -hmm. so if you uh, are food service and uh, depends on what type of food service if you're a restaurant or if you're actually supplying the the uh, the, the materials um, right. it could definitely uh help you out um crystal yeah, absolutely. To tag on to what Sean said, uh, we are constantly looking for uh, those in the food service industry. Um, not only do we contract minority and women businesses uh, here at the Governance Center for our uh, cafeteria services, but in, for any state institution um, as well, uh, casinos, that would, that would be great. Yeah, I don't think people realize that the state of Indiana uh, actually supports the, uh, or I should say that the casinos actually come back to us for mm -hmm. assistance in uh, meeting their MBE goals, goals. Mm -hmm. absolutely MWBE goals. So that's important. Mm -hmm. um, um, also, that, at, at the city oh, of ahead. Indianapolis, um, on construction sites, um, a lot of times they'll do catering, um, mm -hmm. they'll do events and things like that. We you know, encourage them to always seek out utilization at any point during a project. So from start to finish, that they don't forget about opportunities um, for, you know, catering and things of that nature. So I would say um, definitely restaurants should be certified. Um, and again, it's just a good opportunity to get your restaurant out there in front of others across the state. Okay. I, uh, if I could, oh, I want to add sorry. to that. Sure. Um, so for us, the key thing to remember with restaurants is that um, we do B2B space. So most restaurants work in B2C. The B2B is going to be the catering. The catering is what we can certify. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely say you can still get our certifications. Just be aware of the risk. If you're catering to these major corporations, normally this time of year they're having Christmas party, um, mm -hmm. you know, board meetings, etc. With things not being in person, you know, you know, barring the, like Camille said, a construction site or something like that, that's still going on. There might not be a, a ton of opportunities for you right now. Right. I agree. Um, how about nonprofits? Can they access or would it benefit them to access uh, DBE or I'm sorry, not DBE, uh, just certification in general? Um, does your office certify non-profit non-for-profit businesses absolutely ideally does certify uh, for-profit and not-for-profit uh, businesses it is quite competitive but we absolutely do accept those uh, applications as well and okay. certify them um alice um, do you have anything to add to that if you're there <laughs> Maybe she's not there. Uh, go ahead, Sean. D DBE is you have to be a for-profit business to be a DBE. Okay. Dang. And for our program, you also have to be a for-profit business. We unfortunately do not certify um, not-for-profit businesses, but 
I have seen instances where non-for-profit um, entities will create a um, for-profit arm of their um, of their uh, nonprofit. Um, so we have seen that and been able to certify those for, that for-profit arm of, of their company. Okay. Um, as long as you live in Indiana, you can apply to become a minority business, correct? I do not have to live in Indy, do I? Do you have to live in Indianapolis to be certified, no. I guess? Or no, in the state of Indiana? Your business needs to be headquartered and domiciled in the, in the state of Indiana. Um, so uh, one of the things with our program is if you are not um, uh, located in Indianapolis or the um, contiguous counties, um, those, that, those are the areas where we need to go to do on-site visits of your um, company, depending on what you what your business is. Um, but if you are certified by the state, we can accept um, an on-site visit from the state um, in lieu of that. So if you're located outside of those eight contiguous counties, we can um, utilize mm -hmm. um, uh, on-site visits that, that the state has conducted. But um, if you are not if you don't live or or your headquarters or you're not domiciled within Indiana, you would likely not qualify for our program. Okay. As well as, uh, if I can add on to that, the state of Indiana will accept applications absolutely outside of the state. So you don't have to reside here. Um, but again, you do have to have a um, large portion of your business uh, being operated in Indiana, but we have reciprocity with several of the surrounding states um, that, again, if you reside in those states and you're doing business in Indiana, we'd be happy to take a look and um, have you certified as an M or W with um, the state of Indiana. Okay. And the key is to apply. <laughs> I'm right, sorry, I was going to say the key is to um, still apply. Um, often they will say, well, I'm already certified um, here, so you know, they kind of want a, a stamp on that, but you actually still have to apply with us so that we have that on record um, right. for you. But absolutely, we do have reciprocity with several states around uh, Indiana. Okay, mm -hmm. Sean? Uh, DBE is a little bit different because it um, comes out of USDOT. So every state in the country has a DBE is required to have a DBE program if they're going to receive federal highway funds uh, or federal transportation funds. So it's a two-sided process. You have in-state DBEs and you have out-of-state DBEs. Uh, it is a slightly different process and it matters uh, where your business is located as to who your home state is. So that's a more lengthy application with Indiana. So if you are going to be an in-state DBE, um, then it's a uh, six section application. If you're already certified, and that's what's important, you have to be certified in your home state. So if you're certified in, say, uh, Ohio, and you want to do work in Indiana, then you fill out a single page application and provide your corporate taxes to us. And uh, if we don't have any questions, then you end up being certified in Indiana. So, And I think not... the ma major thing with that is, is that uh, you you do have to show that you can work in the state of Indiana, that you're not um, kind of ciphering it off to somebody else to do the work for you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is the certification with the city any different than the certification you need to get with the state? Or are they the same? Um, they are different. Um, I think that we both entities, we look at things differently. So, um, you know, Crystal at the state is looking for, you know, the, the, uh, the programs are very similar, um, but um, they may certify someone that we may not certify and, and their mm -hmm. criteria um, that we're looking at than what they're looking at. Um, so um, it's on a case by case basis. Um, and that's why we do share documents with the state and they share documents with us. Um, but just because you're certified with one or the other doesn't mean um, that, that you'll be certified with us. Um, and so, you know, there are some differences, but in order to do work with the city of Indianapolis, you need to be certified with, with, with us. It doesn't matter to us if you're certified with the state um, 
in order to be on a project with the city, you need to be city certified. Like I said, in, like I said in my program, follow the money. Wherever the money is coming from, that's where your certification needs to be. And just like I said, in uh, to make it even you know clearer as mud, NDOT uses both MWBE with the state and the DBE certification. So even then, when you drill down into an organization, you have to follow the money to know which certification you need. And we are all different. That does not cross over. Okay. So if somebody is certified with Department of Transportation, do they get certified automatically with the state? Do they get automatically certified with the city? No. Uh, the best they can do is utilize those MOU agreements and we can mm -hmm. share documents but each entity retains the right to certify or not certify based on their own criteria. Okay. Some of these questions are repeated. Um, someone asked, and I think we kind of have hashed over this, but are the other certifications required before we can apply for this one? And they're talking about DOT. Uh, no, no. Uh, the uh, way it works with the um, DBE is uh, since we have that extra economic component uh, that we ha you have to certify with us first. You don't have to be certified with the, the city or the state to utilize the MOU. Um, so it, it helps because we all talk. So I mean, if you've already been certified with the city and you've already been certified with IDOA, uh, we may, you know, pick up the phone and say, hey, we looked, we got this application. Uh, what did you guys think about this? But that still is only part of what we consider when approving the application. It doesn't guarantee you anything and you don't need to be certified with them to be certified with us. Okay. Uh, what does MBE in as in Nancy, BE stand for, and I'm not sure that I heard NBE. Maybe that was misinterpreted. We said, does anybody know? No. Um, they might be talking about MBE, which is uh, Minority Business Enterprise. WBE is Women Business Enterprise. VBE is Veterans. And who am I missing? Is there any other? Are those the main ones? Yes. Uh, Still MBE, right. but just different. I'm different sorry. Audience. Okay. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that one. Um, they might want to send us another question or something. Um, someone wrote that it sounds like a great opportunity. What are some examples of the types of small businesses that would benefit from this certification? And I think that kind of is generalized to me. So we'll start with Crystal and work around. Sorry, Cheryl, do you mind repeating the sure. question uh, itself? Uh, they were saying, what are some examples of the type types of small businesses that would benefit from the certification? from your particular certification? Um, and not to be vague, but I've seen a, a number in varying uh, service industries with the small business that have benefited from certification. Ultimately, you know, it's great to have that seal of approval from the state of Indiana, but it's what you will do with it as a uh, business owner thereafter that really makes the difference. So everything from, you know, we've talked about catering services, uh, promotional and marketing uh, services um, items as well uh, are all flourishing with their certification. So I wouldn't, I do not at any point discourage anyone from applying um, for, you know, the type of industry that they are in. Obviously, they have to make that decision for themselves. Um, but as small as it said, what type of small businesses, you know, they're it's such an exhausting <laughs> list of uh, yeah. businesses that are out there. So uh, again, that's that's what I would share on it. It's what you would do once you have that certification, right. um, just to continue to grow your business, to market yourself, um, and stay in the the loop um, right. as well for further opportunities. But 
I Again, I don't the, discourage anyone. I think the uh, state of Indiana buys about anything. They, they are, you know, it's a wide array of uh, areas that they cover. So I think, you Absolutely. know, climb, you, you know, you might create a new one and they might, <laughs> might be certifiable as well. Uh, Sean, you totally. have anything to add to that? It, it, it really is. Um, a lot of it is how much work you want to put into it. I, I would su suggest people do some market research. And I mentioned the um, ISBDC. Uh, go talk to them because they will do market research for you and assist you with it. Uh, so you can see if, you know, you can see before going into this, you know, is this Sean, potential? Tell, Sean, tell what those letters mean. That's what uh, I was going to say. <laughs> Indi Indiana, uh, Indiana State Business Development is it Council. Sorry, we, we live in worlds of acronyms. And sometimes you don't remember what they <laughs> yeah. stand for. You're like, I use this all the time. I have no idea what it says. Is that a state? <laughs> is that a state entity, Sean? Yes, it is a state entity. They're okay. regionally located. Um, so um, just just Google your you know your regional um, ISBDC office. You'll have a counselor you can get a hold of. You can sign up. Um, if you're having trouble, you can contact me. I can put you in touch. So, you know, do a little market research. See if, you know, if you got something that will fit. Because like with NDOT, NDOT's not going to change. NDOT's huge. NDOT is not going to change its business model to accommodate your business. You will have to change your business model to accommodate NDOT, if right. that makes sense. And yeah. that kind of goes down the line. You know, you, 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 so it, it's, if you're not going to provide something that NDOT needs or can use, then uh, you know it's it may not directly benefit you. Now, the program also offer our DBE program offers you benefits beyond just that. Uh, you can get a free uh, uh, business plan. You can get a free capability statement. You can get a free website design. You can get. I mean, the list goes on. What you mm -hmm. get for just being a DBE. So and the networking opportunities. Lots of our DBEs do business just with other DBEs and right. they may never actually appear on a uniform report that says, you know, that goes to Fed Highway and see, says these DBEs were used on this project because they're, do, they're networking within the DBE organization. And I know right. that that goes across the board. So, you know, I, I, I'm not gonna discourage anybody from being, from getting a certification. I mean, you know, it's, right. there's just too many possible uh, 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 good benefits out of it. Right. It just depends on how you're going to work it because you're going to have to work it as mm -hmm. Terry Daniel used to say, and I love this, your certification is just another tool in your toolbox to help your business right. succeed. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Camille, did you want to add to that or is that has it been talked out? <laughs> I think Sean covered it. I, I agree okay. totally with what he said. It's just another tool in your toolbox. And mm -hmm. you, know, you can use it to your benefit um, if you just hold on to it and don't go to any of the, you know, the outreach meetings, the education sessions, the, you know, don't open any of the emails that we send you. You're not going to receive benefit from it. Um, and um, so it's all going to be how you, you know, make the most use of your certifications and how you... Right. Um, use that to help you network with others, um, whether that's um, within our certification vendor list, as Sean pointed out, or whether you're reaching out to primes um, for potential opportunities on jobs. It's going to be what you make it. I'd like to mention, um, this was it's a real quick story, but there was a lady that came into my office and she made cards for prisoners. And I'm like, cards for prisoners? Anyway, the um, state uh, prison system, uh, one of them hired her to be able to do that for the prisoners so they could send back to their families. So I, I guess my whole point is you have to be creative sometimes to uh, get what you're looking for and to uh, get paid for it. So with her uh, idea, she was able to carry it on to the prison system and I don't know if she went to like the nursing homes or anything, but uh, now would be a good time to go there because, you know, nobody can get out really. But yeah, the, the, the ability for the prisoners to have something kind of happy that they could send to their family was nice. Yeah. I um, add, go ahead. Can I just I want to add to that real Sorry. quick. I agree with everything Sean said, agree with everything um, Camille said, but 
we have a wide spectrum at mid-stage, we have a wide spectrum of industry groups, but I just wanted to kind of throw out our top ones, had to pull it up. Um, professional services at 21%. Um, the next is going to be technology and then healthcare. So while mm -hmm. we don't discourage anyone, you know, from applying, um, new innovative ideas, as Ms. Charlotte just said, are always welcomed. I love getting something that we don't have. Um, if, I, if I never saw another technology company, again, it would still be too soon. <laughs> um, okay, so, we're going to cut you off there, Jerome. <laughs> We're not going to cut people out. Um, uh, <laughs> I got but, you. But point, seriously, though. seriously, we don't we don't discourage um, anyone. But if if you want to be um, strategic, you definitely mm -hmm. want to kind of um, do some market research, look at what the corporations need, um, and always look at the because uh, some people ask that question because ours costs money, and so they say, right. "Well, should I?" And I'm yeah. like, "Well, if it's in your budget and you need to add that tool, then absolutely." Okay, thank you. I, I, um, can, I, can I throw something else out there? Okay. So with, with not, no, so excluding Jerron with this, our certifications are free. So the only thing you're out is your time. And each one of us has annual reporting requirements and, yeah. and maybe tri-annual reporting. If you're not, if you, if you go through the process and you find you're not using your certification and you don't want to be burdened by these annual reporting requirements, guess what? just send an email that says, I'd like to withdraw. That's the worst case scenario. So mm -hmm. there, you got nothing to lose except your time in handling it. Okay. Uh, the next question is, I own a commercial and residential cleaning company. What's the likelihood for government contracts and certification on a larger scale? Anybody? In short, very likely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, from, like I stated before, any of our state institutions, uh, the universities, the casinos, any, you know, state facility, that would be great opportunity for commercial and residential cleaning business. I agree. Um, all except Sean, and I don't know why they excluded you, Sean, but um, I have a mortgage loan uh, originator license and security license for retirement and investments. Have you guys seen any opportunities for these services? Anybody? I have not um, seen any any opportunities um, for that, but um, I think um, you know, for the city of Indianapolis, um, probably touching base with our HR department or human resources department um, to, you know, talk about uh, what your your capabilities are. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, it, you know, it wouldn't hurt to do that. Um, but I have not seen any um, any opportunities like that come across my desk. Okay. Um, and I think for isn't um, Department of Transportation, I remember we would go out and uh, well, they would purchase homes and stuff like that, different housing uh, units and so forth, because they were going to build, a, you know, a highway through a road through. Uh, so I don't know if some of this is related to that or not. I don't think with like mortgage loan origination that that would be Okay. Uh, what we're mo more looking for are appraisers who can, you know, do a, 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 an appraisal on the property. We even have a couple, a DBE that does the negotiation part of it, but I'm not sure, you know, loan origination would play into that. Okay. Uh, if you are in the notary public services or service section, would you believe that these certifications will help? Anyone? <laughs> Nobody. Um, you might want to call the different uh, entities that are here, and they probably, on a one on one basis, would be able to talk to you about that um, or either find the information for you. So I would suggest that you contact, uh, you know, if it's for the city, contact Camille. If it's for the uh, Department of Transportation, contact Crystal. And if it is for DOT, contact Sean, and then you always have Jerron, but you might have to pay him. <laughs> He's not laughing. Oh, 
<laughs> okay. Is a uh, certification for businesses that provide administrative services. I don't think they wrote that right, but. Okay, is certification beneficial for businesses that provide administrative services? I'll take that again. Any business can, I believe, any business can utilize our certification. It's just a matter of what your goals are. Um, okay. So I couldn't say that that is a topic amongst the major corporations, but that might be something where you could come in and be serviceable to the MBEs. Some of the smaller businesses, especially in construction, um, they maybe could use some of your admin services because oftentimes you'll have an individual that's very, very strong at what they do, whether it be concrete, whatever, um, but they could use some help with the accounting, the HR function uh, of business. Okay. Um, if we did not answer your question, um, it will get answered. We are, and also someone asked about um, whether this will be played back at some point or whatever. Uh, yes, there is a recording. So you will be able to go out there on IBE site and be able to pull that information up. The other thing, let me remind you is to please, please fill out your survey because it helps us to be able to do a better job. If you liked what you saw today, please let us know. If you didn't like what you saw today, let us know so we can improve it. But don't just put, I didn't like it. Please put why and give us uh, something to improve ourselves. That would be what we would be looking for. Um, I think I have uh, one more question I'll ask and then I think we'll wrap this up. Um, get an answer to the question for a while, but they didn't put the question. Okay. Uh, I, I have a question. I see the question, Charlotte. Do you? Okay. Yeah. So he's asking, he says, I'm, I'm currently an MBE and have been awarded several contracts for trucking. Where do I go um, find the amount awarded to my company if it's not under the affirmative action section? Um, so I think that you would need to reach out to um, the entity that um, awarded you the contract. Um, you should, or if you're with the city of Indianapolis, um, within our documents is, is what's called a letter of intent. Um, that letter of intent should include your um, contract amount or the estimated contract amount and what services you would be providing. Um, if you still are not finding that, if it's with the city of Indianapolis, you can reach out to um, the, um, our purchasing division and they will be able to provide um, that information for you and you can get their contact information. It would be city purchasing um, and you can um, get that on the city website. Um, so again, if you have any additional questions about that and you're still not finding the answers to your questions, please don't hesitate to call our office um, as 317-327-5262. And you might also contact, if it's a uh, Department of Transportation thing, I would suggest that you contact Sean and uh, he can kind of direct you in that area because if you're doing trucking, you probably are, I'm assuming, working for uh, NDOT, but Sean should be able to help you in that area. Um, let's see if we can find one more good question here. Not that all of them aren't good, but... Um, Yeah, I think we answered that one about uh, them working or living somewhere else and working in Indy. Uh, we already answered that. Uh, are there any state or government contracts for, I don't know what this is, new companies, I hope is what they're saying. I'm not sure. They have N-E-M-T, whatever that is. And Sean, someone asked, what was the resource uh, that you mentioned that helps with free websites and free business plans? That is our uh, supportive services consultant. Uh, we have a budget set aside uh, for that. So if you are a DBE in the state of Indiana, uh, you can potentially, as long as the money's there, you can qualify for uh capability statements, business plans, marketing plans, website development, 
um, they assist you with this. They don't do it for you, but they uh, they put together some really good looking stuff. So, and if you aren't a DBE, like I said, I threw out um, ISBDC before. Uh, contact them, and they can help you with similar things. So, okay. Um, in terms of freight, it seems that it would be very instrumental to be certified to get more resources and opportunities with that fall under transportation? This is a Sean question. Uh, freight is a tough one because what we mostly are looking for are haulers who are doing dump trucks. Uh, so if you can haul asphalt, if you can haul uh, aggregate, uh, it, it, you know, if you can haul away spoils, uh, that's, uh, the really the big ticket for um, for haul, trucking for DOT. You know, for, for DOT. Uh, the freight aspect, um, unless you're also a supplier, not so much because if you're a supplier and want to get full credit, you have to have your own transport vehicles. So I mean, if you can partner with someone to that would supply goods, you can transport for them, then maybe, but unless you have dump trucks, uh, that's not a that's not a really big ticket item, right? Okay, not for DOT. How about the uh, state or city? Is that a issue, or do you deal with freight? I can't think of any freight um, opportunities with the city off of the top of my head. That doesn't mean there isn't any, um, but. Um, I'm just, I'm not thinking of any, but again, I, I think that you should never, you know, as it's been mentioned several times, if, if you, you know, think it's good to be certified, you should, and there may be strange opportunities that come across your, your desk. And so, you know, there may be opportunity for freight that we don't currently have that comes in the future. Um, so, you know, with our process being free, um, it's a matter of you putting together the documents that, you um, you know, display the creation of your business and what you're capable of doing. Um, it doesn't hurt to be certified. So again, I haven't seen that um, directly, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, miss out on the opportunity to get certified. Okay. Um, I am a real estate investor. Are there any opportunities in that sector? May I also add, I help house house homeless veterans. Anything? Um, I would say yes with the city of Indianapolis. Um, I would think that you would probably want to connect with the um, Office of Public Health and Safety um, to see what opportunities they have um, available um, to provide resources to, you know, some of our homeless um, uh, city residents. And then also with the um, real estate um, there may be opportunity within the Department of Metropolitan Development. Um, again, I haven't, I can't speak to any specific job opportunities, but there are possibilities there. Okay. Um, Crystal? Um, I would unfortunately have to say the same. That's more um, as I deal specifically with actually certification. I can't speak to any uh, contracts or what uh, may be available in regards to uh, those opportunities, you know, specifically. Okay. Well, I think we've come to the end of the road <laughs> um, and our time has run out as far as this is concerned. Uh, so we will conclude our session for today. I hope that you've all had an opportunity to fill out your survey and um, the IBE Minority Business Sur Series webinar for this year is ending. I would like to thank Camille, Crystal, Sean, and Jerron for being our panelists. I think they did an excellent job in uh, giving you a lot of information to kind of gnaw on. Uh, if you have questions for any of these people, please reach out to them. Um, their number and information, I believe they've given it to you, but it'll also be on the presentation that will be uh, at, the, at Indiana Black Expo, uh, ibe.com, I believe. 
Uh, so look for that. It's IndianapolisBlackExpo.com. Uh, and you can visit there for replay and additional resources as far as information to help you with your business. Have a safe and happy holiday. Thank you.